On August 5th, the world comes together in Rio de Janeiro for the 2016 Olympic Games. That's one month from today. And while there are always questions before the Olympics about whether the host city is ready or not, this time around they seem a bit more urgent. At many venues, the finishing touches are being installed now. The velodrome has a track, the beach volleyball court has bleachers, and organizers insist they will be ready. We are scheduled to have everything done by the 18th of July. But still, the country is in the grips of political turmoil. Crime is still a major problem. Alongside pollution, the Zika outbreak, and a doping scandal. For more than 10,000 athletes, the games are the culmination of a lifetime of training, the pinnacle of their careers. So with weeks to go, what do they make of all the controversy and how does it affect them? To get the athlete's perspective, we're joined by two well-known former Olympians. Haley Wickenheiser is a five-time Olympic medalist and member of the IOC Athletes Commission. She joins us from Calgary. Mark Tewksbury is a three-time Olympic medalist and former chef de mission for the Canadian Olympic team. He's in Toronto. Thanks to both of you uh, for joining us. Um, I want to hear from both of you on this, but Haley, why don't we start with you? I mean, <laughs> these are unusual games. It's probably a generous way uh, to describe it. How, do, how does all this affect the preparation by athletes, in your view? Well, I think as an athlete, um you know, hopefully having a good support team and informed staff around you. Uh, every Olympic Games has its challenges. I remember Sochi, it was, uh, you know, the village wasn't quite ready. Was the security going to be good enough? You go back to Salt Lake City, it was post 9-11. There was a huge paranoia. Uh, and panic within the U.S. Um, you know, every Olympic Games has its challenges. So, as an athlete, I think you have to you have to know that that just exists around the games. The media hype is always a little higher. And and uh, I, what I like to do is kind of go into a little bit of an Olympic bubble where you just block all of that out. When you get to the games, you're there to focus on your job at hand and know that, that everything will likely be okay. How hard is that, Mark? Well, I mean, I've, I've spoken to a few athletes recently and, and they are exactly in that space that Haley's talking about. I can say, though, I mean, just people knowing that I'm going to Rio, not as an athlete, but as part of the broadcast team, people have concerns about me traveling to Rio. So I'm imagining it's not that easy for every athlete to just completely stay in that bubble in 2016. There's so much information floating out there. And as you said, there's extraordinary circumstances around these Olympics. Do you think it's fair, Mark, to put athletes in a position where they have to choose between their their well-being and taking part in the games? Well, I think there's really two Olympics, Paul. And I think if you're an athlete and you're accredited and you're in a secure zone, you're really in the safest place in the world. And if you're a Canadian athlete, you're also part of a delegation that is very sophisticated, will do everything possible to make sure that your health is not at risk. So I think from a Canadian perspective, um, the athletes are fine, but I do think that there's two games. I think that people outside of that secure zone, um, it would be hard not to pay attention to all of the media coverage of the bigger issues happening in Rio leading up to these Olympics. H Haley, how do, I wonder how you think the IOC is handling all the health concerns. Well, I, I can say that the IOC is on top uh, on a daily, hour by hour, um, updated process of what's going on. But from an athlete perspective, uh, if I was a Canadian athlete competing in Rio, I wouldn't be concerned. Just moving on to another issue that a lot of people talk about when they talk about Rio now is, of course, doping. Um, what's your take on the, the games vis-a-vis -vis that? I mean, at, at some point, does it create a taint for the athletes who are going? Well, uh, you know, I've gone, spent a lot of time with talking with Becky Scott and, and the WADA Athletes Commission, the IOC Athletes Commission, and, um, you know, it, it definitely uh, is so important that the Olympic Games is protecting the clean athletes of the world. And never before in Olympic history have we had a doping scandal of this uh, magnitude. And um, I think in the next few weeks, um, depending on what the different international federations do of, uh, you know, the Russian athletes that are appealing to compete in the Games, Games. It's going to be very interesting, um, but I'm a big advocate of uh, the clean games, and, and this is something we've never seen before. Mark, what's your take? 
I'll just, yeah, I'll just jump in on that. I mean, I think it's important to remember the vast number of athletes are clean competing in the Olympic Games. I think that it's really interesting because in my lifetime, I didn't think that I would see something happen like a Ru Russian Athletics Federation banned from Olympic Games because what that's saying essentially is there is a problem. We finally acknowledge the systemic approach to doping that no one's really wanted to address head on in the past. And now that we've addressed that, the question becomes where do we go from here? And I think this is the interesting time, Paul. I think that you know there's some athlete leaders, uh, leaders out there, um, as Haley said, Becky Scott being a, a real advocate for this issue, that really are calling upon leaders of sport to do the right thing here. Because if we don't and people lose faith in sport as we know it, that's the end of the Olympic Games. And I think, so now we know there's a problem, where do we go from here? <laughs> but we've, the thing is, I think what a lot of people are thinking is, gosh, you know, 1988, blah, blah, Ben Johnson, blah, blah, and it's been around for so long. And I just wonder if, if we're ever going to get to the point where people just think, you know, it's <laughs> always going to be there. I mean, is that, and, and that's, you know, I hate to be a buzzkill, but that's what a lot of people think. It's just the way it is. It will always be there if you don't do anything about it. And I think this is the shift. I think that the fact that there's actually addressed systemic doping, no one's done that. Canada took it very seriously back in 1989. And the Canadian Centre for Ethics and Sport does an incredible job of educating people and ensuring that our athletes are clean in Canada. I don't think that every National Olympic Committee in the world has that kind of commitment to that kind of doping, nor does the IOC or WADA, I hate to say it. I'd like to see really where is the money going to come to do a wider spread investigation that people like Becky Scott are calling for. Somebody's got to pay for this stuff. Let's see if international sport leaders are willing to do it. Yeah, I think it's also important to add that I think we're always going to see some form of doping in sport. Uh, if, you, if, you know, as Canadians, it's hard to, to think of what an athlete in, in Kenya or a country like this who's living in poverty has to go through to get to the Games and just what an incredible performance at the Olympics could do for someone's quality of life. And so uh, it's a really tricky issue, that, which I agree with Mark. It comes down to educating the athletes. Uh, I'm a big believer also the IOC has to take a very, very firm stand on this and, be, and show leadership, which is what we as part of the IOC Athletes Commission are trying to push f to have happen. But this is really unprecedented where you see, uh, you know, alleged state doping. And uh, as time goes on and we get the uh, results coming out of the investigation, it's going to be a game changer for the world of sport. And, and we have to do this right. Look, the, the IOC sent these games t to Rio, obviously. Uh, and now we have all, the, you know, from Zika to crime to the political upheaval and the doping. Is, is there a risk that the public just kind of gets fed up at some point and, and ought the IOC be aware of that and work hard to make sure that it doesn't because the, these are you know, a monster event that everybody looks forward to but this is it's gone crazy this year. I, we're running out of time here but I hear from both of you in this. Uh, uh, Haley why don't we start with you. Sure. Well, I can tell you that uh, we've had communication with President Bach at the IOC as the IOC Athletes Commission, and we've very, you know, specifically and urgently stated that this is a watershed moment for Olympic sport, that people are losing faith in the Olympics and, and what they stand for if uh, we don't handle this properly, specifically the doping issue, which is the one I'm most concerned about. Uh, Zika, the crime, other things like that, um, you know, that happens in every Olympic Games. But uh, from this standpoint, the integrity and the credibility of the Olympics it's it's the ultimate in sport and it's maybe the only place in the world where you know truly the the countries of the world come together at peace for two weeks <laughs> every four years so um, I, I just think it's a it's an unprecedented moment of sport that we're, we're looking at right now and Mark well in fairness to the IOC Rio was chosen seven years ago so some of these issues weren't on the radar but it is I think going to be cause for concern and cause for reflection after the games to think how does the Olympic movement move forward without leaving stadiums, without leaving countries bankrupt, without et cetera, et cetera, but at the same time does all the great stuff that Haley talked about, which is bringing the world together under peaceful circumstances through sport. So I think there's a lot on the IOC. I also think it's going to get worse before it gets better. I mean, the issues that we're talking about haven't even started to include things like transportation on the ground in Rio once the games start in a really landlocked country with water and mountains and security and all sorts of other issues. So I think it's time for some reflection on how is the Olympic movement moving forward. Um, Rio's, as, as Haley said, a watershed moment, maybe not just for doping, but how we do Olympic Games in general. Well, thanks to both of you. It's been interesting. Let's cross our collective fingers and... Uh... <laughs> See what happens. Thank you.